What's up, y'all? Welcome to the stream. It's going to be a little bit of a short one today. I'm just fixing some bugs, um, but I got some other stuff to be doing tonight. So um, it's probably only going to be about an hour long, something like that. I got an alarm set. Anyways, I'm fixing bugs. Still fixing bugs like crazy in Songbringer. Really close to being finished with Songbringer, but just lots of little bugs to still fix. Um, but really whittling it down. I mean, seriously, like, there's only 45 bugs left. And that's on my official, like, list. And then there's, like, only maybe, like, five more new ones I've found recently. So maybe only, like, 50. What's up, the Shadow Ox? Yo! How's it going? <clears throat> this first one I'm working on is this problem here where... Oh yeah, what's up? Yeah. Cool, wow, you're watching the second one. Live. Oh yeah, I hear you, man. It's not for everybody. Not every game is for everybody, you know what I mean? I'm not that into some kind of games. You're not in that to that some kind of games. Everybody's into the games that they're into, you know? The styles, the genres. I hear ya, I hear ya. Uh, <clears throat> you can't find the sword? Did you look on the screen that you're on at the very beginning? There's a cave there. You got the top hat, but not the, the sword? Were you in permadeath mode? You were in permadeath mode? Oh. Oh, you're in basic mode? How did you get the top hat without the sword? What, do you know what world seed you were on? So the game, what the game does is it, is it, it surrounds the, yeah, I would, I would definitely love to know what world seed you're on. So I can figure out why your world didn't, there's this, there's some thickets, there's meant to be some thickets, right? There are these like, you know, things that require the sword to get through. As long as you're in basic mode, you're not playing permadeath mode. It surrounds the home screen, the home area, like there's about six different areas or so, and it depends on the world. But it will usually surround that whole section near where you start with those thickets. So you're forced to get the sword. You got somehow you got the top hat. That's so crazy. Wow, I'm really interested to know what world seed you were in so I can figure out why it allowed you past that without the sword. Um, and then of course if you if you're really badass and you really you played the game before, you already know all of what's going on. You can play in permadeath mode, and then it doesn't surround the area with the with the thickets, so you're allowed to completely beat the game without the sword if you want. It should not be possible for you to run away from the start too quickly. Um, because of those thickets, right? The thickets are supposed to be there to block you from not from getting away from that start area without the sword. Uh huh. Wow. Hmm. Cool. Well, once I know what world seed it is, I will take a look because I'm curious. And I'll probably fix a bug because of that. Um, I guess there's a couple possibilities. You might have found the top. Did you find the top hat? Did you find the top hat in a cave, actually? Oh, sweet. That's awesome. Yeah, do you happen to remember... 
You were longing for the sword? You was in a cave. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, so there was basically, at the very start of the game, there's a cave entrance that you kind of, that you skipped that had the sword in it, and then you found another cave, which has the top hat, which is meant to only be, that that cave is meant to be outside of that home area. So whatever your world seed was, it must have put that cave, that extra cave there with the top hat, too close to the home screen, so close that it, you were able to get to it. Gamer fail? No, no, this is not meant, this is a game fail. This is a bug for sure. Yeah. The Songbringer failed you, my friend. It's the beta. Sorry about that. You found a bug. So, um, what? Okay, so this bug I'm working on here, this one is different in permadeath versus regular mode. So here's a screen. That's, this is very, this is quite a related to what we're talking about here. Ramjet. Let's take a look at that right now. Actually, we'll take a look at Ramjet just to put this on the list. Wow. You got, yeah, you got pretty far without. It's really challenging. It's really, really challenging to play the game without the sword because it does so much damage and the top hat's kind of weak at first. You can power up the top hat later, but you're definitely not going to do that in the first 30 minutes of playing. Um, so yeah, that's, the, that's why you played for so long without the sword, man. Um, Ramjet started at zero. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this world. How do I propose playing with binds? What do you mean? Oh, for a keyboard layout? Well, keyboard, okay, if you're playing with the keyboard and you're not playing with the, um, a controller, of course I recommend playing with the controller if possible. It makes the game a lot more fun and it works with just basically any controller. But if you want to do a keyboard, really you got to find something that works for you. Um, yeah, it does. It'll do that if you don't have a controller plugged in. It'll still show you a controller. Um, graphic and kind of like pretend like you're binding a controller on your keyboard. Um, it just makes you do that so that you use your own preferences for buttons on the keyboard, right? So it doesn't assume that you're, that it doesn't assume any kind of keyboard layout. Um, I recommend using Vim, uh, that's what I use is Vim keys, which is kind of weird. So probably most people would not be used to that, but um, you can also just use the direction pad for moving and then whatever six buttons you want for. Oh, so you're using WASD and then button numbers. So you kind of have to have both of your fingers on the same section of the keyboard. I see. Yeah, you can always rechange it too. You can change it later. Like maybe you come up with a better binding layout that you prefer. You can just go and, and reset your controls and do it again. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what, yeah, WASD is actually what it's set up as, WASD and then Q-E-R-Z-X-C-V, I think are some of the, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's not really a mouse game at all. It'll never have a mouse. Um, some people have requested it, but I really kind of disagree with adding it from a from a game design perspective it's really really meant to be played with a controller as like like a classic action rpg and and for people that have requested a mouse that finally played songbringer realized oh this would not be fun with a mouse you know it's like oh this this doesn't make any sense you know you can't really click on anything it's meant to be played with a d-pad you know Right, yeah, see, now that you've played, you understand, too. It's like, it's really not a mouse game. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, it, you're the first person that's actually given me this feedback. I think because most people um, play with a controller, typically, you know. Oh, no worries, no worries. Yeah, let's. I'll take a look at this world so we can both have a look at, like, why, why your world got to be that way. Or why you were able to get the top at. In fact, I should take off the top at. But anyways, here's where you very, the very first screen you start on, um, you just go in the cave to get the sword. And it's, it'll be there, even though, because I already have it, so that's why it's not there. But it's there for you when you first start. Let's actually get some items equipped. I don't know why everything's all unequipped. This is kind of my standard layout, items and stuff. Alright, let's save that. Oh, you went left? It's, well, it should not be a fail because, okay, so that's, that's a great thing. Let's go left and figure out where you went. Ah, see, there are some thickets right here. Can't get past those. Oh, there's thickets here, thickets there. Huh. So, so where did you go after this? There's thickets here, can't get through there. There's some more thickets. Thickets, thickets, thickets everywhere! Oh, it's entirely blocked off by thickets, what the heck? Okay, so we obviously have some kind of situation. Either you played in permadeath mode, are you sure you didn't play Permadeath? Huh. What would cause... Okay, where is... Oh, you died like... Okay, so great, great. You died and continued, so it definitely wasn't... Okay, so maybe it's a World Seed desync. Maybe there's a problem. Um, I'll have to check this out later because what could be happening... Oh, well, it, I guess the feedback you could give me if you wanted to um, would be to just look around, see how I see how I, I walked around those just those six areas that were near the home screen, and I looked for those thickets, and I was entirely blocked in by the thickets, right? So there's some thickets right here, right? And if you, you should not be able to get past those, unless you somehow did, did you just somehow get past the thickets? And see, there's thickets there, thickets there. Can't get past those if I don't, unless I use a, some kind of weapon. And there's thickets here too. There's thickets like around everything. So if, if you can show me how you got past those, or unless maybe your world looks different, and that would be that would explain a lot. If your world looks different, then that's kind of what I'm expecting, and that means that there's a, a problem with the way the world generator is going. And it's um, it's working differently on Windows versus Macs because I'm running on Mac here. Maybe you're running on Windows, and that's why. You found the sword, nice. Boys of Grog. What's up, Boys of Grog? Oh, you okay? So you walked three three squares, three areas north, huh? I bet you, I bet what happened was that, um, it's a, it's a, it's another bug. So there's, oh, well, this is, this is the only bug here, but yeah, I'm thinking what's happening happened is that on your world on windows, it was different. Hopefully that's the case. I got, I can't really load up my whole VM and do that right now. So yeah, let me just create a bug about it. Man, I hope it's I hope it's that that issue. Okay. 
good. All right, well, good. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, uh, hoping you enjoyed a little bit more with the, with the, um, well, how you're intended to kind of play it and experience it. If you're, if you're starting out and you're playing in, in basic mode, not in permadeath, you're meant to have that sword really quick, right away. And it makes, it makes playing a lot easier. It's really hard with just the top hat. It's like a pro move right there. You're like, you're a badass if you can not get the sword purposefully and just beat the whole game without the sword. That's actually an achievement, but I don't think anyone's done it yet. Okay, so yeah, I'll save Ramjet for later. I'll check that out. But for now, we wanna to go to this world where it's got these two different um, entrances, or these, these two areas basically are different in, war in permadeath versus in normal mode. And so that's a big problem. Okay, so it's um, World Seed QA. We can start right at the beginning. And I should, I'm gonna confirm that this is an issue here on Mac, and it's not just a Windows issue, first of all. So I'll run it once in, in regular. Sweet. Yeah, okay, right, there's, um, it's there. And now if I go to permadeath mode. Right, okay, good. It's not, it's not like a platform issue, it's actually an issue in the whole game, on all platforms. Alright, so in permanent mode this is different because it's not adding the gate there. I'm thinking what's happening is that um, because it's not adding those thickets around the home screen, that this screen changes. So I am going to solve this kind of intuitively. I kind of worked through this bug a little bit ago. I was actually driving to the store and grabbing some food and stuff like that. And so. Um, I thought about this bug and kind of solved it in my mind before doing it, so I'm think, pretty sure this is how to do it. I'm going to go to maze gen, and in permadeath mode, it surrounds the home screen with gates. And this is a big issue because... Um, that, that essentially what that does is it creates a different world. It's slightly different. It's, it, it does this at the very, very end of the world generator. The, I mean the overworld generator. Um, and that's why I thought it was safe to do it there. Basically add some gates after it's done everything else. Just add some gates around the home screen. But The better way to do this is basically to allow it to create those gates, no matter what, whether it's permadeath or basic mode. And then in permadeath modes, just simply don't add the gates once it's once it's already once it's creating the area. Yes, I totally did. I totally do. Please tell me. I'm very curious. All right, the next little trick here, well, first of all, let's check and make sure that um, there are some thickets here in permadeath mode. And then we'll make it just so permadeath mode ignores the thickets if it's right around the screen or the home. Cool, there we are, yep. Okay, um. Okay, so you went west, north, East, east, top to right, squeeze to north screen. Oh, let me check that out. West, north, east, east, top right. Okay, so you were here, you went west. North, east, and then east one more, and then you squeeze through the top right. Oh, I see. Oh, right there, you mean? Hold on, let's let go. That doesn't go back. You can't walk through there.
not growing back. What the heck? The grow back tiles are breaking. You're supposed to grow back on you. What? It's like another bug. What? Oh, you can! There it is, right there. You can accidentally squeeze through right here. Okay, good call, man. Thank you for explaining this. That's it. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's that's totally, that could be fixed on today's stream even if I can, if I got time. Okay, so that's at seven, one, seven, eight, eight, one. Okay. Great, that's awesome. Thank you so much. That's so great. You, d dude, thank you so much. You, you just helped me solve the bug so much faster. You saved me at least a half an hour right there, man. I would have booted up a VM, checked it on Windows, checked it on Mac, and gone, ah, oh, it's the same thing. And then I would have gone, oh, how did he do it? And I would have searched forever going, how the heck did he get through there? And then I might not have even seen that. Right on, good, I'm glad. I hope I hope it's a lot more enjoyable. Okay, so let's get this one done. World's different, we almost got this going. Um, so we should be Mega Seed QA and Permadeath, yeah, yeah. So we, get, we should have it set up now so where both areas are the same. Right, so Permadeath looks like that. And regular. Good, regular looks exactly the same. Great. Let's keep it in permadeath while we fix this. So when we create a grow back tile. Oh, and also, what the heck is wrong with the grow backs not growing back? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there. The thickest don't grow back there either, which is really curious. Okay, create a grow back tile. If area pause dot z is zero and we need to get the maze start point. So I'm getting the maze for this Z and then getting the start point of the maze. Well, we need to also have a gate flag. So yeah, we have a gate flag very pause Z and if we are close to the home so if abs of start X minus area pause dot X is less than or equal to two and abs start Y Minus area pause that y is less than or equal to. So if we're 
if we're close to the home screen, right, within two screens of the home screen, so it could be on the home screen, the very next one, or the very next one, then return. So skip creating a, let's make the little comment here. Don't create grow back if near home on in permadeath mode. Okay, see if it works. What we should experience here now is exactly the same area except that there's no growbacks or no thickets in um, permadeath mode. Very good. Okay, so here we are. We're in permadeath mode. We could have just ran right through there without having to get the sword. Now, let's test that out in regular mode. Oh, there's a problem. All right, what is it? Oh, because I forgot to add the permadeath check. Okay. Um, no, it, it shouldn't be obvious. Um, it's meant to be a game where you are allowed to explore and nothing is holding your hand. However, there should be a point where you get an item called a biodetector. It should be something you stumble across while you're, while you're running around the overworld. Um, this item will appear on a screen and it'll be like this gray thing with the circle. And yeah, look in your inventory. Maybe you have it already. Press, and it worked. I think this is one thing where, oh great, so did you use it? This is crazy, this is exactly the same problem my friend had. And I gotta do something about it. In fact, I'm gonna add something like that to my list right now. Um, you did use it. Wait, no, you, did, uh, you haven't answered yet. Um, this is definitely a problem. Yeah, you just bind it. So what you do is you, um, oh, right? You don't know how to use it? Ah, that's the thing too. Right? No, I hear you. I hear you. No, don't, don't feel like that at all. This is a very esoteric game. But I think that's a problem recently. I think it's something else that I added where I removed a default button for these. And it's really made this kind of confusing for people. I think that's the problem is that it never auto equips this thing. So that's probably the first most important thing is to make this so you can auto equip it. Um, oh, for me to be able to use this, I need to have not already used one. So let me turn off, let me just pretend like I hadn't used a bio detector yet. But yeah, it's really simple to rebind things. You just go to your inventory, you go, you select the thing you want, and then hold down the key you want to use it. So I'm here, whoops. There is the bio detector, right? And I'm gonna equip it to the C key, which is a, which would be a button five, or whatever, you know, so I guess this would be number five on your, on your setup, right? So I'm just holding down C, right? I let go, and it remaps that button for me to see, right? And now I go and I press C and it shoots out the bio detector. And the bio detector is that thing that helps guide you. If you don't know where to go, you're totally lost. You have no idea where dungeons are, which is always the case at first. You're like, where am I? Some people prefer to explore. Some people prefer to be guided. So that's why there's this item. You have the choice, right? Do I want to use the bio detector or don't I? Oh, it's, if it's making an error noise, then um, there's, some, there's some different cases where... Are you sure you don't already have a green dot?
Yeah, oh, you already have a green dot. Oh, okay, so that's why you can't use another one. Okay, that explains it. Yeah, so oh, that, that brings up a really, really important point here. Um, a lot. Force, even. Force the bio detector to be equipped. Force the first bio detector to be equipped. I think there's an issue right now where I changed something recently and it used to auto equip the bio detector for you to a key, right? So it, it you would have seen like, oh, there's the bio detector. Oh, I could press the C key or whatever to use it or five key. And for some reason I did something else which kind of broke that. So I'll make sure that that's re-enabled so it doesn't confuse anyone else because that that's a really important point, right? You're first exploring, it's your first 15 minutes of playing, you get this item, right? The biodetector, you have no idea what it is. It doesn't even get equipped. You've never even opened up the inventory and you're expected to be going, going into the inventory and remapping something? I don't think so. I wanna make that way easier as it, as it was before. And that should help that. Oh, okay. I hear ya. So this is so important. I want to put this on like the important stuff list. That's like almost every player could run into that and get really, actually this should be more important. More important than all that. It's shoot. Yeah, this is like, let's fix that next. I'll work on that to, on today's stream hopefully. Okay, so I forgot to add the permadeath check here. Okay, there. So now it should create those in regular mode. Oh, right. Yeah, the big door. Ah, okay. Yeah, you'll... It's, it's, you're meant to kind of find that big door right away, but it's really just meant to make you curious more than anything. Um, I won't ruin it and tell you what that is or, you know, or how it plays into the game later, but it, it, it does play into the game. You'll, you'll experience that later at some point. You'll be like, oh, sweet, there's this again. Okay, great. We've got... Why does it keep loading story mode? Okay, so let's go back to regular, oh no, permadeath mode. And we should not have those tiles anymore. Cool. All right. So I'm going to wander around a little bit and kind of take a visual note of how things look. Hopefully, I can remember this mostly. Let's wander around without permanent mode. Make sure it still looks about the same. This is not very scientific, but I'm pretty sure this bug is fixed, right? Just kind of double check in here. Cursory glances here and there. Yep, that looks about the same. I'm pretty sure that's the same stuff. Only difference is the thickets. Okay. Next, let's go to a different world and make sure that something else is also still the same. All right, yeah, I'm saying you had that pond there, okay. That was kind of blocked off over that side. Some foresty areas here. No, blocked off path that way. Okay, let's look at that in permanent.
Great, okay, that path is open there, but the shape is exactly the same. Yes, good, good, good. Okay, I'm checking this one in, it's done. Great, that's a really simple bug fix because um, fixing the bug, ma making the worlds unified, now these worlds, whether they're permadeath or not permadeath, they're exactly the same tiles. It's just that when it goes and it finally creates that tile, it goes, oh, I'm in permadeath mode, I'm not gonna create those thickets right here on this area in this particular case. So that just makes all the data exactly the same in memory for the game, no matter which mode you're in. And it just, when the area gets created, that's when it actually makes that distinction, which is kind of just better in lots of regards. So I like this check-in. This is a good bug fix. This really unifies the worlds and should, should fix even future bugs by doing it this way. Okay, so we're checking in maze gen and area creation and area pause Z has a gate. If we are two screens away from the home in either direction, either axis and we're in permadeath mode, then don't create a thicket. All right, check that in. What? Check that in. Okay, so let me check out this other one um, about the biodetectors. This is super duper important. We're going to force the first biodetector to be equipped, first of all. You've increased the res, but it seems more pixelated. Um, I'm curious as to why it might look that way because it's always the same amount of pixels. Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, are you playing? What what happens when you play in borderless mode? Like instead of selecting the resolution fourteen forty p, what if you do borderless or full screen? What do those look like? Do those look the same? The game should look pretty pixelated. It is a pixelated game. And in fact, you're watching my stream and it's really, really down sampling everything. It's, it's, it should look a lot worse on the stream actually. It should look a lot cleaner and better on your laptop, especially a MacBook Pro Retina, which is exactly what I'm, I'm streaming and developing on and playing the game mostly on. I, I mostly use a MacBook Pro Retina. So it should be looking good for you. Okay, first biodetector. Oh, it's the text? Oh, okay. Well, if it's the text, then great. We can, I can, whatever it is, I can take a look at it. Which, okay, so which text is it that's small? It's hard to read. Okay, so I need to not have the bio detector. And it should trigger. Let's take a look at that story element. I think it's item zero. Find level one. There it is. Position seven, idle two. Has item zero? No, no. Oh, that's item zero. Item one. There it is. Compass. Flux slide. Not zero. Not Brutus. Nine positions. All none of those areas. Has the sword. Yeah, we should be able to find this. The seed select screen. 
So what part of the seed select screen is hard for you to read? And and also, does it look better in, in borderless? Oh, you mean the time slots? Yeah, that's that's tiny numbers because it's it's pixel art. Um, I mean, there's really not much I could do there. The if I, I can't change the pixel size, for example. So I, so I see what you mean. These are small numbers and they're hard to read, but kind of intentionally so. I don't know. I, I, can't, I don't know. I don't know what I could do to improve that. Okay. It's kind of the style of the game. And what it's what it's trying to hint at too is that some things you're this is the message of Songbringer. You might you might kind of pick up on this at some point, but like the message of Songbringer is to not use your brain, to use your heart. And so I guess that kind of sounds like a cop out or excuse in this sense, but it really is intended to be that way. There's some things you're just kind of meant to like not need to know. You don't need to know how much time you've, you know, it's not really that critical how much time you spent is you can kind of get a, a an overview of how long you spent. Um, I mean, you get a, at a glance, you can see, oh, this one's an hour about, this one's about an hour and a half. But does it really matter how many seconds, you know? Cool, man. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know what to do about that. Okay, so I need to find the bio detector. There we go. Okay, great. I found it on the second screen. Um, oh, I've got everything equipped, so I don't. I want to unequip a few things. Like, uh, we'll take out at least the meditate and blink. Okay, if I go to this screen and get the bio detector, it does equip it to see. All right. So yeah, you can totally use it at first. Isn't there a case where it doesn't? Oh, maybe that's the that's the cup actually. Compass zero, default to button L. Oh, what if I did every everything? I had all six, this is so crazy, like, impossible for you to actually make this happen like this. To get all six items full before you even encounter a bio detector? That is like literally impossible. I think I'm fixing a bug, which is totally like impossible. So, this, there's no way. Uh oh. Still, I can write some code to force it. No, 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 no. It's just a waste of time. I really shouldn't do that because there's no way the player could get six whole items before they get the blink. Because you get the blink, or I mean, they, before they get the that compass, because the compass, you get it 
after only, I just, just confirmed this, you get it after only nine positions, as long as zero or Brutus doesn't exist. The only way the player could actually do that would be if they found level one already and gained the bombs and started gaining all these items. You have to go through maybe like two or three dungeons even before you had enough items to equip everything. And so there's simply just no way that the player can get that to happen unless they already know how to play, basically. So I'm not going to worry about that half of it. It does auto-equip it. That was the important part. But I'm not going to force it to be equipped. Alright, but I do want to add a story element to hit it about using it if you... So we'll call this um, Compass 1A. Has... Oh, that's another thing though. You have to have the sword for that? Oh, wait a minute. If you didn't pick up the sword, if you just wandered around without the sword, it would never give you the bio detector. So perhaps actually this should, should be not requiring the sword. So in your case, somehow you wandered away from the over from the home screen without the sword. It would have never given you the compass until you got the sword. Even though you somehow bought some bio detectors. Um, to know what they mean, you can just go to the map and move your cursor over to it. Let me show you. So you just move your cursor over to the map, right? So what, instead of being over here on the equipment, you just move, keep moving to the right until you're on the map. And then you just move your cursor over something. So like H, it shows you on the bottom of the screen there, map location 700. This is the crash site, you can teleport here. H just means it's your crash site or home. That's really what that stands for. The little X's are typically points of interest. And then you can see it says there, the plus signs are stores, but also it's there on the map. On it's all it's all here on the map. You can just you can just hover over anything, and it shows, tells you what it is. Yeah, you can navigate to the map, and later when you get the teleport item, you can actually teleport straight from the map. Oh, right, right, the story element. All right, so I took off that. Oh, let's make sure that... This is, might be messing things up. So we'll turn that one off at first. Okay, so if I go to the left again. Okay, we still get the bio detector. Even though we do or don't have the sword. Oh, that's, I guess we should check that, right? So if I go and take off the sword, no sword, we should still be able to get this bio detector. Oh, it didn't give it to us. 
Well, it might have been because there was enemies. No, it's just not giving it anymore. Oh, because Zero's there. That's not triggering anymore. Hmm. Okay, it's just not working. Does it... Ah, I wonder if it changes up what it does. Huh, why, why isn't it creating this in permanent mode? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess I gotta set a breakpoint because this is. Just, I. Um. Oops. Okay, breakpoint. When it's creating, when it's trying to see if it can do. If it can run. Um. If. P equals v three i. Seven six one zero and no dot key equals compass one. Okay, let's find out why it's not able to run this. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that, man. Okay, here we are. We're trying to run Compass 1. We are still flux slide. Oh, what? It already ran the key? Because compass one has the freaking name. It's exactly the same as an item. Oh my god. Okay, that's not that hard to okay, so this needs to be like let's call this get compass one. Right? I know, just the animations going left and right. That's like around day one. Huh. 
It's been an interesting experience live streaming most of this video game from its conception mostly. I mean, well, I conceived of it and then spent about a month thinking about it and doing some like mock-up art before I ever did a live stream, but still, I was at the very very beginning of making the game when I started live streaming it. So hopefully that's that's cool. Okay, so get compass one. Let's see if that works now. Mostly unproductive? No, not at all. It seems like it, right? It seems like it would be unproductive, but that's, I guess you have to change your definition of productive, right? Um, or at least I did. I realized from making my last video game that um, focusing on your game only and not marketing your game or sharing your game or talking about your game or like, you know, promoting your game. If you don't do any of that kind of stuff and you're an indie developer and, and you, you're probably gonna fail, you know what I mean? If nobody knows of you and, you and your game and you try and release it, you, or you try and get everybody to know about it right when you release it, it's a bad idea. I failed, my last game completely failed. It was like a two year project. A buddy of mine and I worked on it. We made this MOBA for iOS. It was a zany, um, crazy game. And yeah, so we, we, we financially flopped. Nice, right on. That's cool. Oh, sweet. Thanks, man. Uh, it still didn't do it. Still didn't spawn this. Okay, so why not? Um, I guess we'll keep the same breakpoint. What? It worked that time? What? Oh, man. Somebody's... Somebody's... A god is messing with me right now. There, okay, it's working. For some reason, it's working now in permanent mode. Good. Okay, so that worked. You can get the, you can get the bio detector in permanent mode. That's cool. So hopefully that, and or if you somehow make it out of the home area without the sword, you're gonna get the bio detector anyways. Okay, now let's make another story element. If we have item one, we've idled for a little moment, right? Like you're standing there. We do dialogue for, I think this was already added. Story. Call this one Get Compass One A. Dialog, get compass 1A, and then delay at least two seconds or so. Don't save. Exists not Bruce, but does exist Jib. This has to be Jib. Okay, so this dialogue is going to be way too long. Oh, it's not even attached to a character. Oh yeah, those guys that throw stuff, they are hard, aren't they?
Okay, so if we already have the bio detector and the thing is though, if I stand here, is Jib just gonna do? Okay, so if we get rid of that first sentence, this makes more sense in any context. So perhaps you should use the bio detector. You, if we just add the word just here, I think it'll help this. I wonder if I take away all that, if it still reads, if it still makes sense. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've had so many moments like that. There's lots of places to find health, like enemies are a great place to find health, but they're dangerous because you might get hurt. Um, you can actually chop down pillars. There's sometimes there's there's teeth in the pillars. If you're on the overworld, you can walk over grass and find pillar, find hearts or teeth. And then also there's like you can sh like shake the bushes and stuff. You can get use the sword or your top hat or whatever and shake the bushes, and a lot of times you'll find some health. So weird, sometimes it doesn't trigger it. Is that to get? No. Oh man, sometimes I don't understand why it doesn't spawn, but like one in ten times it just doesn't want to. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Now, if I immediately start running. shoot okay so yeah that that story almost spawns it that story almost talks about it that works yeah avoid those avoid those guys for sure especially when you're first starting avoid a room if you see three yeah three of them in a small room that's definitely it's meant to be a challenge so the game actually makes more difficult rooms have more difficult enemies so that room the dungeon generator has determined to be a difficult room. There you go, you bombed them. Nice. Nice work. Once you get the cactuses too, that'll really help. Yeah, you get a couple different rewards at the end of the dungeon. You get a reward for beating the boss, and then you get a reward at the very end of the dungeon. And usually it's awesome. You're like, what? I just got that ability now. So cool. It, it's kind of addicting. You're like, whoa, I just got another ability. Maybe just I'll play one more dungeon. At least that's what I always think.
four out of five times. Um, that's yeah, that's not the end. So yeah, that's just an area where you you would have got a, a key there. Actually, are you talking about a bro you went downstairs and there's a broken tube thing. And then you can just go back upstairs, right? And keep exploring the dungeon. That's that's not the end of the dungeon. That's actually just a place where you would find a key normally. Yeah, that's that's just a key. So if you're stuck and you're looking for where to go in your dungeon, you can um, you could use a bio detector. A bio detector will show you where the boss room is, um, or you can just look at your map and go, where have I not been? What doors have I not been through? And and then you should that should help you find where to go. You'll definitely know when you get to the end of the dungeon because there'll be a boss. Nice. Yep, so scanner drones and biodetectors are great for exploring dungeons and, and the overworld as well. They, the scanner drones are kind of like the map. They show you, they, they, they kind of illuminate bits of the map and then the biodetector puts a green dot on your map wherever the latest dungeon and or boss is. Cool, okay, so he did that dialogue. Let's see if I save it here. Does he do it again? Right, and so if I use it... Oh, it's probably gonna be wrong. So if I use it, now I have the dot. Go back out. I think it's going to replay that dialogue, but it shouldn't. Yeah, okay, so we need to do a quantity check. When we do this, get compass 1A, we have to have, not just has item 1, but quantity item 1. No, actually just quantity compass 0 equals 1, or 2 meaning we haven't used it yet. So I don't think quantity can parse items like that. Right, so we've used it. No dialogue. But if I haven't used it, That. But also, it shouldn't display that dialogue if you've already used another compass, another biodetector. So in this case, right here, I have I should have a green dot already. Jib shouldn't do this. Okay, so we need something like We need something in the story system to be able to detect if it has a story element or not. Oh, and there's my timer going off. Okay. Let me just write down. Okay, so that's going to have to be it for today's stream. My timer just went off. I must away. I must do other things. Um, but let me write down a note before I leave to say... Um, don't do get compass one a if has a map read dot already 
And that'll be it for that one element. And I get rid of that on my list and move on to the next things. So that's it for today's stream. Thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for chatting, Shadow Ox. It was fun, man. Thanks for thanks for pointing out lots of really good points about Songringer. I got some good few things on my list to get done here. Yeah, appreciate you, man. So, all right, everybody. We'll see y'all later. And um, that's it.